Can you turn your mic on? Testing, one, two. I hear myself in here. Are we good? Can you go to the overhead mic, uh, mic, overhead camera, please? Um, this way. Yeah. Yeah, if you could pan it to the, um, no, not rotate, just pan it this way. Wait, like way over here. I'm, I'm over here. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. All right, now that we found me. <clears throat> All right, sorry to keep you guys waiting. I guess my clock's a little bit slow, or it took me longer to walk over here than I thought. All right, this is E544 discussion. Um, hopefully that's why you're all here. Um, <clears throat> my name is Aaron Fries, I'm the TA. I have TA'd this class many times. Um, so hopefully I, I'm getting good at it by now. Um, let me just give you my basic information. <clears throat> it's my name, obviously. It's my email address. Probably the best way to contact me other than office hours. And my office hours are thus. Um, Wednesday, uh, <clears throat> 2.30 to 3.30. Uh, Friday, right after this discussion, so that's going to be 2 to 3. <clears throat> and that's going to be in BHE 106. Um, <clears throat> the number to that room will be handy for you to have if you come to see me, just in case I forget to block the door open. Other than that, this number will be useless to you um, because I'm not the time likely is to be in there at random one. unless I have office hours or I'm, I'm there for something else. Um, <clears throat> so if, if it's not during office hours, email me and you'll get a, a much better response because, you know, you, you can leave a message on this number, but I have no idea how to check it. <laughs> so so you, won't, you won't really get me, you'll get nobody. Um, <clears throat> a bit about me really, really quick. Um, I'm a PhD student here. I've been here for a long time. Um, I work on photonics uh, slash device physics. Um, and mostly what I do is uh, simulations on um, on the high performance computing environment um, here at USC. And I've TA'd a lot of courses, um, you know, some of them which, which you might be taking as well. Um, I've TA'd <coughs> several undergrad courses, which you guys are probably not interested in. But I've also TA'd 544 several times, and I've TA'd 562A. If any of you guys are taking that or have taken that. Um, and you know, I've gone through the screening for actually both for SIPI and for electrophysics. <clears throat> so if you guys are, have questions about that stuff, um, I'm happy to answer that as well. Okay, uh, so that's about me. Excuse me, I really have some phlegm in my throat here. <clears throat> um, one question I have administrative-wise, um, on DEN, <clears throat> I can set up some forums for you guys to ask questions. Um, the one that has been most popular has been a student-to-student -student form, um, so you guys can ask questions of each other. If, if we do set up a form like that, it will not be monitored by Dr. Zahid or myself. Um, it will just be uh, there for you guys to ask questions of each other. Um, you know, obviously, we can go in and see it, so don't use it to cheat, but um, you know, if you have 
I don't know what kind of questions they've, they've even asked there before, just general stuff about the course uh, or looking for groups for projects, stuff like that. Um, would you guys want something like that just to communicate with each other? Yeah? So student forum, yes. <clears throat> so I will set that up um, as soon as I can, probably later today. Okay, so <clears throat> today what I'm going to talk about are is two things. I'm going to talk a little bit about the tools that we're going to use in this course, and I'm going to do a review of um, transforms, which you guys have hopefully had. And so I, <clears throat> I won't do a very complete review, and it'll, it'll kind of seem haphazard, but hopefully it'll be enough to remind you guys of what you've seen before uh, <clears throat> in terms of transforms and that kind of thing. So. Let's not skip three, let's skip two. So the tools, there are, and tools is kind of a general term that I'm gonna to use to mean software. In this course, um, there's ADS, there's Virtuoso, um, and then there's Microwave Office. <clears throat> All of these kind of do the same thing. Um, but the one that we have available to use here at the school is this one. And so that's the one that I'm going to introduce to you, the one that I'm going to show you how to use when it comes to this kind of things. And, and these are all circuit and, my, and RF simulators. So <clears throat> I will show you everything that you need to know how to do this one. Um, so all the above simulate circuits, um, and they have very similar feature sets, as far as I know. Um, obviously there's going to be differences in how they're used and that kind of thing. So if you're used to using one at work, um, I would encourage you to use Virtuoso so that I can actually help you with it. Otherwise, you will be very much on your own. and. Um, Let's say this, for this class, use Virtuoso. Um, you'll be level with everybody else, you know, you won't be ahead or behind, um, and I can actually help you, and it levels the grading field that way. So, use this only, please. <clears throat> um, and to that end, I will show you everything you need to know how to do on that, in that software. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of where we are in the class um, as far as talking about this kind of stuff, but I just want to let you know ahead of time what I'm planning to do here. Um, uh, and that is starting from setting up your student account to use the software. That's what I can't see. <clears throat> I'm sitting up here trying to read my notes and I, I'm farsighted so everything up close is difficult for me to focus on, especially when I'm tired. And so I'm wondering why I'm getting, getting agitated. It's not my own fault. Okay, so from setting up your student account, um, to use the software and I will take you all the way through to simulation. Uh, plotting of results, and then after after we make whoops after we make plots, um, interpretation is mostly left up to you, but that's it's kind of what this class is about um, when it gets to that stage. Um, so that's up to you. Mostly. That doesn't mean that I'm going to leave you out in the cold when it comes to interpretation, but it means that, um, you know, if you're trying to build a matching circuit and you get a certain result um, at, the, at the input, you should kind of have an idea from what we've covered in the course as to what you need to do. Now, 
it doesn't preclude you from asking questions about anything. Um, some questions I just may decline to answer. Um, if they're, if I think that you should know it, or if um, I feel like you're using me as a crutch. But most of the time, what I'll say, uh, if it's something that I think you should know, I, I, I will send you away and say, you know, think about it, you know, look at it from this point of view, and then try and come back. And if, if you still don't have it, we'll talk about it more. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start this stuff hopefully in four to five weeks, and it's going to seem really out of touch with what he's going through in class. So just so you know, that's coming, and it's going to be like that. The reason why I started doing it early is because a lot of times people have issues when it comes to do, doing the second project. They haven't set up their account, and uh, it's this big uh, crunch to get everything done. And so if we get that out of the way ahead of time, it goes a little smoother when that project comes around. And because that project is at the end of the semester, you guys will have other things that you have to be doing as well. And so it just makes it easier, hopefully, on you and, and me as well. All right, so that's enough about the tool stuff. So let's look at our transforms. <clears throat> so this is a radio frequency type class. So a lot of what you're going to be doing is frequency domain analysis of signals. Not exclusively, but you know, to a large extent, it's very germane to this class. So, obviously, the transform <clears throat> of choice usually is a Fourier transform, and just because it's interesting, this guy's a, a French math mathematician um, and physicist who discovered the greenhouse effect. I'm just giving my little interesting blurb about this guy, so this isn't really imp important. But he discovered the greenhouse effect, which I, whoops, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, as you remember for this transform, but he also discovered the greenhouse effect. But this is not very important to <laughs> this class, uh, at least material-wise. So here we go. On to our transforms. <clears throat> and that's the last thing I'll probably say about the greenhouse effect. Um, frequency analysis. And this is, like I said, just transforming, or I guess I did say I alluded to, transforming a <clears throat> signal from a time domain representation. to a frequency domain representation. <clears throat> um, and this is done by projection onto what are called basis functions. Whoops. Now I am going to functions, functions, <clears throat> um, and in the case of the Fourier transform, the basis functions are of the form of E, J, omega T, um, that kind of basis function. Um, the reason why I mentioned that is because if you've had enough um, linear algebra, um, the basis functions are very similar to basis vectors. Um, they serve the same purpose, it's just there's an infinite number of them rather than, you know, one for each dimension, as there are in, in, the <clears throat> in most linear algebra type problems. So, our Fourier series. And this is for periodic signals. And it's undefined for signals that are not periodic, but the definition of the time domain signal, um, I'm going to put a little P there to make sure, remind myself it's periodic, um, is the sum over the frequency domain 
coefficients times their um, their basis function. So here's the coefficient n. This part here makes up the frequency. And t is just the time, the value at the time. Um, sometimes called the um, exponential Fourier series. Because you can do this, you can do a similar thing for your, with cosines and sines. <clears throat> so in this representation, <clears throat> little x sub n are called the Fourier curve. Sorry, I should be making that capital F coefficients. And, sorry, represent the <clears throat> frequency content of the signal at um, f equals 2 pi n. Um, 2 pi n being a multiple of the um, fundamental frequency of the of the um, the signal. Okay. <clears throat> so how do we find the x of n? That's really what we're interested in here. Finding x sub n. Well, I have the the time domain representation in terms of the Fourier coefficients. And so, if I multiply both sides by e to the j, I'm sorry, e to the minus j 2 pi f m t, I get this. And then I can just take that inside this summation here. end up with 2 pi f n minus m t. <clears throat> and then the next step to, to find or to, to straighten this out, this is just integrate over one period to find out what the, um, what happens then. So I'm just going to take this guy, integrate over one period and magic will happen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it in this way, um, from minus t over 2 to t over 2. <coughs> e to the minus j to pi f m t. Summation. And I've skipped a step here and just switched the order of the integration and the summation. So this thing only has a value, it turns out, um, when n is equal to m. And its value is just going to be xn. Um, because this, this whole thing will evaluate to 1. Otherwise, this, um, this term, because of the f here, which is a, um, an inverse multiple of, well, let me just write that, f equals 1 over t. right? So all of these are going to be experience a, an, an even number, well, a whole number of periods in minus t over 2 to t over 2. And so the, integration, the integral of a full period of any sinusoidal function over one period, or an integral number of periods, is always 0. So um, so. 
I'm just writing what I just said, sorry, e, e to the j t pi f n minus m t has an integer uh, number of periods, sorry, I'm going off again, periods in um, this range, minus t over 2 to t over 2. Um, and the integral, I can take out xn because it's just a, um, just a constant in, in this, to this integration. <clears throat> this equals zero for um, when n is not equal to m. And so the only case where it is not equal to zero is when um, this integral is, or this is zero, this becomes one, and then you have when n equals m, you have xn minus t over two, t over two, dt, and that is equal to t times xn, okay? And so what you end up finding, therefore, xn, sorry, is equal to 1 over t times the integral. Now oh, this is just going back to, to this expression right up here uh, and, and substituting in the only value that gives us a non-zero result, t over 2, xp. The minus j, now I said n has to equal to m, so up here this, this m is going to become an n. m is become, going to become an n, sorry. Is j 2 pi f n t dt. And the reason why I went through that derivation is because the derivation to find uh, the Fourier um, representation when it's not periodic is actually basically exactly the same. Um, you don't have the periodic nature, but you have, you're integrating from minus infinity to infinity. And so the, the same kind of thing happens where the, uh, the non-equivalent uh, components cancel out and you're left with uh, an integration that looks basically like this where instead of going from minus t over 2 to t over 2, you're going from minus infinity to infinity. This one's just a little bit easier to do and it's, um, just the first transform that I, I talked about, so I did it there. So, <clears throat> let's do an example. Because everybody likes to see examples, right? Hopefully. So, pretty basic example. You guys have probably all seen this before. Um, <clears throat> it's just going to be a, a box car. So, middle of this one's going to be t, and this is going to be 3t over 2 out there. <clears throat> And then um, inside here, we have the duty cycle, t naught over 2, t naught over 2. So basically what this means is that, um, <clears throat> let me specify this a little bit further here real quick. Um, and let's make the amplitude, I'm just going to make the amplitude 1. You can make it other things. But so from t naught over 2, to minus t naught over 2 to t naught over 2, the value of the signal is 1, otherwise it's 0. And then the, the frequency repeats every um, big T uh, seconds. <clears throat> so let's find the Fourier series coefficients of this.
So just going to use my form that I found up here, this one right here. <clears throat> and so just feeding things into that formula. Um, I haven't specified T any more sp specifically than this. Um, I have my single XP of T, U minus J2 pi, F and T, integrating over T. And now I can specify this further. XP of T only has a value from T minus T naught over 2 to T naught over 2. And so that means I can, I can limit my value, my range of integration from, to these ranges. Oops, I forgot one part, sorry. Um, and I can replace, in that range, I can replace XP of T with just the value 1. So doing that, integral from minus T naught over 2 to T naught over 2, and then I'm just left with e to the j 2 pi f n t dt. Not a hard in integral to do. Um, just take down the exponent um, without the t e to the minus j2 pi fn t, and then going from minus t over 2 to t naught over 2. And from here on, it's just substituting things in. I'll go ahead and complete it just to have the answer um, up here. So I have minus 1 j2 pi fn. And then here we are, minus j2 pi fn t naught over 2 minus e j2 pi fn t naught over 2. Close that, close that. Um, and then I can cancel things like the 2 here. And I realize that this is basically a sine function in here. Um, when I take the j and the 2 out uh, with that. So what I'm left with, 1 over t times pi n sine but I, I thought I'd made a mistake. Not unheard of, obviously. Um, so I'm left with this, and then um, hopefully you guys know that you can you can turn this into a this into a sync function um, fairly easily. I don't remember the exact conversion um, whether you you take the f or not. Um, I don't think you do, but um, that's that. Um, hopefully that looks familiar. You guys, you've seen at least seen it before. Um, you're not going to be doing, you know, transform after transform after transform in this course. It's just good to know this. Um, it will show up on a couple of homeworks. Um, the, but the main point to take away from transforms is that you can represent a time domain signal with a Fourier domain signal, and beyond that, the most useful transforms. For, for looking at these kinds of systems are usually going to be, um, you know, for a single frequency, the transform, um, if that's a cosine, oh, it's a sine, is going to be, you know, like this. Um, and that idea, knowing this, Will, will get you pretty far in most cases, um, as long as you're comfortable with just taking a, a, a sinusoidal signal and, and assigning it just an impulse at um, f and minus f. Um, that, will, that will actually get you through most, most of the transform, or most of the frequency domain analysis. 
when the transform homework comes up, you'll actually have to go through and do more complicated things than this, but this will get you through most of the course, and being comfortable with that idea um, will help you, help you along quite a bit. Okay? So a couple more things about transforms. Um, average power. Um, so this is Parcival's. <clears throat> the average power in a periodic signal. Um, calculate it using the time domain oops, minus t over 2 time domain signal yes in these brackets oh Parsifal's yeah isn't that what this, this one's called Parsifal's theorem the yeah Caused me to panic here. I didn't. I didn't write it down up here, and I, I, I was like, "That's the right name, isn't it?" Um, Parsifal. Yeah. Um, so it's just a magnitude squared, uh, the integral over uh, one period, uh, normalized by the period. And we know that this is going to be a real signal inside the the magnitude brackets. Um, but if it is a, if f of t is a real, real signal, then you can get rid of those brackets and just replace it with f, uh, f squared of t. But the thing that people most like to do with this is what a Parsifal's theorem actually is, and that is to transform this into a, um, something in the frequency domain. Uh, an expression is frequency domain. So I'm just changing, instead of using x now, I'm using f. Um, e to the j 2 pi f and t. <laughs> Don't get confused between this f and this f. They're different. Um, this one represents the Fourier coefficient because it's got the subscript n. This one just has an n next to it. Probably a bad choice on my part. I apologize for that. Um, but once I run through all this, uh, the magnitude squared of e to the j 2 pi f n t is just 1. Um, and the integral over uh, one period of the square of a sinusoid <clears throat> is um, it's 1, right? So essentially this part drops off. Um, well, actually, here's what happens. This part drops off because the, the magnitude squared of this is 1. So you're left with, sorry, I was trying to remember how this came about. You're left with um, basically this integral, which has no variable of integration, and then you have um, this I mean, it doesn't have no variable integration. It has no, um, the integration variable doesn't show up in this expression once the t goes away. So you're left with this, fn squared. I've done something wrong here. This bracket needs to come in here, ah, which you can do um, once, when you start doing this integration over all of this, this summation, it has the effect of just taking out the fn components. Uh, and when you have the cross components, they cancel out because they're, they're integral over one period. Um, it's going to be zero again. Um, so, 
the integration drops out, and all we're left with in Parseval's final statement is this. Instead of the integration in the time domain, we have a summation of the frequency domain of the frequency domain components. Ta-da. And so, you know, you can argue which one's easier to use. Doesn't really matter to me which one you think is easier, um, as long as you use one. The, the nice thing about this is that um, if you want to find, say, the, the power at, um, you know, a specific frequency, you know that it's just the magnitude squared of that, um, that frequency component. So if you want the DC power in a signal, you just take the, um, the coefficient as that has uh, n equal to zero and square it. Um, that too will come up in homework. Okay, so I'm, I'm mostly done. Did I did I forget to cancel that? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, you're right. It canceled with the with the integration. Because this this integral is just going to be t, so the t the one over t and the t will cancel. Thank you. All right. So that was the Fourier series. The Fourier transform is um, basically the analog of that for a non-periodic signal. Transform a non-periodic time domain signal. And it doesn't have to not be periodic, because um, you, can, you can do a Fourier transform of periodic signals as well. You just end up with a single impulse. Or, well, not a single impulse. You end up with uh, um, values only at, the, at the, what would be the Fourier coefficients. Um, so transform a non-periodic time domain signal to frequency domain. Um, and if I start off with the frequency or the um, frequency domain representation this time, rather than giving you the um, time domain in terms of the frequency domain. I'm now integrating over all time. So that's that one. And I can, I can come up with the next one in a similar way by um, doing more integration. But it, I don't really see a point to doing that since I already did a very similar process once. And you guys have most likely seen it before. Um, And this is df. And um, so quick note here. Um, a lot of times you'll see this written as uh, e to the j omega t, and you'll have a 1 over um, 2 pi out front. That's just a change of variables on this, this thing where um, you substitute omega equals 2 pi f. And then um, d omega is now equal to two pi df. And so when you do the when you do this change of variables on this integration, you end up with a one over two pi out front. Um, pretty pretty straightforward. That um, I don't know how long it took me to actually think of that myself because um, I never really thought about it. I just knew that there, you know, when you do it in, with 2 pi f, you have one, uh, no 1 over 2 pi, and when you do it with omega, you have 1 over 2 pi up front. Okay. So the last thing I want to remind you guys about, um, for transforms, there are properties. 
and this will help you to uh, take something that you know and apply it to something that you maybe don't know the Fourier transfer from uh, with less steps. So, um, I don't I don't know a bunch of these. I have to look them up when I use them. But um, just to give you an example, time domain, frequency domain. Frequency domain. Um, so in time domain, multiplication of two signals. Um, like you would do for uh, modulation. Becomes convolution. Um, in the frequency domain. And vice versa, if you have a system that has some, some impulse response and you want to do the con... <laughs> I mean, a terrible time spelling. The convolution in the time domain, it becomes multiplication in the frequency domain. Um, and that's what gives you the whole ability to, um, you know, if you have, in the frequency domain, if you have some signal and you want to apply a filter to it, let's say, um, this is my filter, H of F. In the time domain, I can just multiply these together and find out. So this is my signal. Um, I call it X of F. So when I combine those, I just end up with the part of the signal that I want and nothing else, right? And all, I've, all that you've done in this case is just multiply those together, whereas in the time domain, that results in the convolution, right? Of the impulse response of the system with the signal itself would get you whatever the time domain representation of the signal is. Um, other properties uh, I'm not going to write these down because well I don't want to but I'll just name a few um, so there's time dilation and that's basically where a signal gets spread out or shrunk in time and that has a specific effect on the Fourier transform uh, time shift uh, results in um, multiplying by a, fact, uh, a phaser in time domain. Um, let's see other interesting ones. Um, I had one in mind. What was it? Oh, differentiation. So a differentiation of a time domain signal um, basically results in multiplying the frequency domain by j omega. Um, one thing I do want to point out that, that maybe you guys haven't heard before is that all of these properties um, also apply to a more general set of transforms. Well, I call it more general because there's more um, information about the Laplace transforms. Um, and, and actually, the Fourier transforms are a subset of Laplace transforms where you just have a uh, zero um, a real component in the frequency domain, <laughs> which means that it's complicated, but the, the relationship is, is such that the, um, the Fourier transform is the um, imaginary axis of the Laplace transform. Um, Laplace transform. And so in some cases where you're doing, um, you know, building amplifiers or that kind of thing, the Laplace transform comes in really handy because it gives you another way to look at it and define, you know, your, your response that you're going to look at and, and to discover whether your system is going to be stable or have ringing and that kind of stuff. Um, so with that, I'm going to, going to wrap up. Um, 
Are there any questions that you guys have for me right now? Well, good, then I don't have to refuse to answer any. Um, not that I would. Um, so that's it for today. Um, next week, I will likely talk about um, transistors, another review of things you've hopefully seen before. If not, that's fine. Um, but I'll talk about structure, physics, models of them. And then I might talk a little bit about um, the complicated models that we use in simulation to, to talk about these things, just because it's kind of interesting. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend.